Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems. It's nice having you in class again today. How have you been? We are going to look at something on survey computations, right? Yes, um, that should be the basics of, let's say, one of the basics of surveying. You know, um, when you have an irregular plot, you know, like something like this, we have A, B, C, D, right? Good. Then we have lengths of um, 208.959. 119.957.187.368 then 249.534 and you were asked to calculate the area of this plot you weren't given the coordinates and then there were no um, let's say um, angles or bearings that we have measured or let's say computed for right good so I think um, basically it's been applied in um, chain surveying chain surveying yeah or chain survey the basics or it can still be applied in maybe when you go out to acquire data that um, you do not um, or you did not go out with your um, more advanced um, equipment and you just went out to the tip and you were able to define the boundaries very well maybe the boundaries were well mapped out and you were able to define them so we are going to use um, the Heron's formula we are going to use the Heron's formula to calculate the area of what this irregular shape so with the Heron's formula you basically only need what the um, the lengths or the distances right good you only need the, the distances then you can go ahead and then um, apply the the Heron's formula so thanks for coming to class um, if you're coming to the channel for the first time you can encourage us by subscribing and if you are returning you are thanks for always um, checking up on us so the first thing is that we have to write out what the um, the Heron's formula entails. Now in the Heron's formula, we have um, in the Heron's formula for calculating area, we have um, two um, we have um, two parameters to take note of. We have the the semi perimeter, which is the S, and of course the area, right? Good, which is A. So for you to get the semi perimeter, it's actually by okay. We did not say something about dividing the plots into triangles. Now, um, when you want to apply the Heron's formula, you have to divide your irregular shape into triangles or into a triangle. No, into triangles because you have more than one triangle. So you have to divide your irregular plots into a triangle. So we chose to come from A to what? A to C or from C to A because we don't have a bearing, so it doesn't matter. You can go from B to D in as much as it gives you a triangle. So if you go from B to D, which means you have a triangle B, C, D and triangle A, D, B, right? Good. Then we went from A to C, which means we have a triangle A, B, C and then triangle A, C, D, right? Good. So when you now have um, a well-defined triangle, you can now use the two triangles within your irregular plot or let's say your irregular shape to now get the, what, the area of each of the triangles add them together then it now gives you what the area of what the irregular shape so let's now come back to explaining the formula so what the semi perimeter does is that it calculates or it adds the the size of one of the triangles or each of the triangles and divides them by two so in a case where we have this this is actually the solution part of it so we've actually drew a, a line from a to c so we are having them um, triangles A and B, right? Good. So for triangle A, we have what A, D, C, or let's say A, C, D, as the case may be. Then for triangle B, we have what A, B, C, right? Good. So now for how then do you scale out this length? It's also very, very important. How do you scale out this length? You know, we told you that it's used in the basic principles of surveying, right? Yeah, in the basic principles of surveying. Let's say you are carrying out chain surveying or compass surveying. So most times they use scale or we use scale. Yeah, we use scale. We use the scale. Now, when you've actually scaled out this length, this length, this length, and this length, you can actually confidently scale out the length from A to C. So how do you do that? In as much as you are able to scale out these other lengths, all you need to do is to just place your scale at zero, then drag it down to this point. So whatever value you have, that's what that's the length of this particular diagonal, right? Good. So that's how we did it. 
at this point. So from A to C, gave us what 222.116 meter, which is actually related to this other one, this other lens we have here, right? Good. So since we have the lens of A to C, it now serves as the bridge or the connection between what these two triangles, and we can now use it to get the perimeters and subsequently what the areas, right? Good. So now for triangle A, that is ADC, which is ADC, right? Good. So we have our A. Now, the side um, opposite the angle has the, the smaller letter also, right? Good. That's the one basic thing in um, triangles or mathematics. So for side A, we have 187.368 meters. For side D, which is the diagonal that was introduced, we have 222.116. That's this. And then for side C, we have what 249.534, right? Good. This now implies that if we are employing this um, this um, formula for the semi-perimeter, so we have what A, please ensure you get your calculators to confirm these answers. So we have what A plus B plus C divided by 2. So the sum gave us 659.018 divided by 2, which is what 329.509 meters, right? Good. So that's now our semi perimeter, or that's now our S. Please confirm this answer. Going forward, we have what the, um, the area. Now remember that the area is dependent on the semi perimeter, which means whatever value we have in our semi perimeter will be used in our area. So, how do you apply or how do you apply that in the area? The first thing is that um, you type out your semi perimeter. You don't, um, I would not advise, let me, let me just say that, I wouldn't advise you to use the square root at once. I would advise you to process what we have inside. Then you now find the square root of that answer. It makes it somewhat easier for you and less um, confusing, right? Good. So you say what the semi perimeter we got here, which is um, 329.509, multiplied by, you open a bracket, so uh, you can just follow through, as I said, get your calculator. So you have what 329.509, you multiplied by, you open a bracket, that same 329.509 minus A, which is what 187.368, right? Good. You close your bracket, you open another bracket, or you can decide to put the multiplication sign. It serves as tautology because we already know that the brackets there are actually multiplying each other, right? Good. So just remove the multiplication sign. So you open another bracket, you retype what 329.509 minus B in this case, which is what. Um, 222.116. Now remember, our case is not ABC. Our case is actually what ADC. So you can, you should understand what we mean by ABC. So we have what 222.116, right? You close the bracket. You open another bracket again. You are you type in 329.509 minus 249.534. Then you close the bracket. So when you hit your equal to, you should be able to arrive at this value or this figure here. Yeah? 4022692825 right good so if you actually got it that's good if you did not get it you can actually retry to confirm so when you are done with that you now just say square root of the answer so square root of this answer should give you what the area of triangle a which is let's call it the partial area right good. the area of um, triangle a so the area of triangle a should be 20056.652 square meter so we are going to apply the same place. Did you understand what we just explained? If you don't, you need to just pause, rewind, because it's actually very simple, right? Good. So the same thing we are going to do for triangle B, which is what A, B, C. So we already know that our A, which is the side opposite the, um, the angle, is what 119.950. Our B is the diagonal we introduced, which is what 222.116. And then our C is what 208.959. So the same um, way we've explained, you add all the sides together, you divide it by 2, you have something like 275.513, right? Good. Now, for you to have the area, this is your semi-perimeter, which you've just got in. You now apply it here. So how do you do it? The semi-perimeter multiplied by semi-perimeter minus one side, multiplied by the S minus another side. So the first side here is what, 119.950. You open and close another bracket, the semi perimeter to 75.513 minus 222.116, right? You close that, then you come to the next bracket. You have what the semi perimeter to 75.513 minus what the C, which is what 209.959. So 
you should be able to arrive at this figure that is this value here of um, 152 right good then you now find the square root of that answer so when you are done with these two when you are done with these two which means you now have what, the two partial areas or yeah the two independent or let's just say you've gotten the two areas or the areas of the two triangles good the areas of the two triangles that you've actually um let's say created from your irregular shape right therefore the area of the irregular shape a b c d which is what a b c d would now be equal to the area of triangle a d c which is this plus area of triangle a b c which is this right good this now implies that we have 20,056.652 plus 1,2,3,4,1,4,1,5 all in square meters. So you should be able to arrive at 3,2,3,0,6,7 3, square meters. So this is the area of this um, irregular shape, right? Good. You know, normally when you want to get area, sometimes it can be length and breadth. Or maybe if you have the coordinates, you can use coordinate method, or maybe is it um, double latitude, double departure, or something like that. You know. However, in this case, we just have our length or the distances, and we are asked to calculate the area of the irregular shape. So we believe that we've been able to show you how you can actually calculate the area of an irregular shape like this which you can apply to any other irregular shape by actually introducing what series of um, triangles and then um, um, operating or yet say calculating yeah yeah let's say solving each of those triangles independently then adding up their areas to now give you the, the cumulative or let's say the actual area of the irregular shape so thanks for coming to class we are going to see you on our subsequent videos until then, keep staying safe and have a very good time. Bye.